Hi there, it's Joy Foster, founder of Tech Pixies. Uh, this is the Spark on Thrive podcast. And uh, today we're going to be talking to Steve Byrne all about how to market a travel company. And this is extremely uh, an, an extremely interesting conversation right now, given the environment. So we're filming this uh, in the middle of the pandemic. And of course, all travel has been halted. Uh, so Steve, welcome to the podcast. I am really excited to talk to you, particularly because so many of the women in our community uh, are in the travel industry. Right, so okay. thank well, you for being here. That's also a pleasure. Uh, so tell us about your business. Tell us uh, what you do and uh, fill us in. Okay, well, the company's been going for uh, over 25 five years and we essentially provide a, a platform. And I mean a platform in its broadest sense, both the business model and the product and the tech and the technology and a culture and a community that enables uh, independent business owners to run their own travel business from the comfort of their own home, or it could be a shared could be a shared office. And uh, the people who use our platform and they trade under the name of the brand name of a travel counsellor, they build a relationship based travel business. They'll uh, find customers, uh, look after customers, surf, service their leisure and corporate travel travel needs and build a relationship, build a travel business based on those relationships. And our platform gives them everything they need within the, the power of their laptop or PC or, uh, or mobile, mobile device or tablet to, to power, their, power their own independent travel business. So everything they need from product to licensing to, as I say, business model is all available in our platform. Um, so you were a pioneer of homeworking and that has remained a core part of your business. It, why was homeworking so important to you? Well, I didn't. I didn't create the business. I'm the. I'm the hired help. I've been there for a uh, for for a while. We have over two thousand travel counsellors now in uh, five countries, six countries, and the vast vast majority work from work from home. And when the business was set up, this was was set up on the basis of empowering people to have their own business from the comfort of, our, of their own home. And that provided two benefits. It provided the travel counselor with the flexibility of running their own chosen vocation, i.e. to be a travel professional from, the, from their own home and the flexibility of doing that alongside other things that people want to do, which is you know, uh, family interest and all, the, all, all that. And also make sure that the travel counselor could be available at the time that meets the needs of the customer rather than being dictated to turn into by the opening hours of a of a shop or, or, a, or a fixed physical asset. So the working from home provides the travel council with the flexibility to straight their travel business around the other demands on their time and also make sure that they're there at the time that meets the needs of their customer. And obviously things are a little bit different during the pandemic, but uh, before the pandemic, we will have transacted over a third, nearly 40% of our business, you know, after 6 p.m. in the evening where we're engaging with customers at a time that suits the needs of the customer. That's a great point. So the timing that people want to book travel is outside of working hours generally. And for a lot of women working from home, that really suits their schedules. And 70% uh, of our travel counselors are, uh, are women and, uh, uh, you know, they've, most, most of them have got busy family lives uh, too, but they all share a common uh, set of values, which is a commitment to their to their customers, and do the right thing by their customer, and make sure that the holiday or the corporate trip that we provide is not just right for the customer, but we're all we're all we're also there for the customer throughout the throughout the journey, not just to to make the booking and take their money, but also to make sure the holiday is in a seamless way and they have a great time, and then keep in touch with people when they when they come back and. And hopefully you're no different with your family. People like talking about travel. <laughs> We're all a bit desperate for it now. Uh, and you tend to talk about it when you're together. So that'll be in the evenings or weekends. So we're available to talk and engage with the customer at the time it's the right customer. And the whole business model is based on the right thing by the, by the customer. Because without customers, we don't have a business, do we? No, and at the moment, I mean, with this pandemic, you've you've got customers, but they can't go anywhere. So, how have you kept the spirits up for your uh, your travel counselors? How do you encourage them in this environment? Well, I think there's a couple of things in 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 play. We're incredibly blessed to have you know wonderful, special people who 
by their trade as a as a travel counselor and that that has manifested itself in two two ways one they've carried on uh staying close to their customers and advising them you know a number of people sadly have had to rebook their holidays several times or you know, we've organized refunds or advising them on the ever changing travel landscape so travel councils continue to do that and also they've helped each other you know we have such wonderful people and you'll know from the community that you've built 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 up that people like to help help others and when you're helping someone else you're also helping yourself and you never know when you might need that help and support you yourself so there's been a lot of mutual giving and sharing and support within the within the within the community using whatsapp and uh, other channels to keep people's spirits up and then on top of that the company you know we, we try to be as proactive as we possibly can reflect who we are we're a people-based business you know we believe in we believe in caring and we believe in caring for our customers and each other it sounds a bit trite but we try and live to that so we've tried to wrap our arms around our community you know uh not a physical way, of course, but in a virtual, virtual way to make sure that we do all that we can to support them in the things that they will need support on. So that includes mental health support, it includes financial support. We created our own welfare fund for those that were struggling financially to complement any government uh, schemes. We created an information hub so they had access to all the relevant information to secure government uh, funding. We tried to provide ins inspiration and, a, and, a, and advice through constant communication. So we do live webcasts like this. Every, uh, every week and then we try to make sure that we give them all of the tools and the assets that they need to keep in touch with their customers so that in the middle of this uh, terrible thing that we've all gone through as human human beings and none of us are immune to the health and human impact of, of this but in dealing with that there is also you know an impact on business and commerce and income which can have a positive and a negative impact on people's livelihoods and, and men mental health but has also been opportunities we've pivoted our business, for example, to do a lot more domestic breaks this this year. So we've been proactive in making sure that we're giving the travel councillors the assets to be able to go and get the best out of the situation that we face face ourselves. So in summary, the community has come together to help each other. And I think one of the lasting things that we're going to see out of the pandemic is the power of the community, both within businesses and more, and more widely. And secondly, we as a company have tried to do the right thing by people. And in doing that, I was very, or we have been very minded of the fact that in the middle of this, we've all had to do things that we would not otherwise maybe have done. But it didn't need to dictate and determine how we operate and how we behave and how we conduct ourselves. And I think we've all wanted to make sure, even though at times it's been very testing. You know, I'm sure everyone's patience has been tested with homeschooling and the like, uh, but testing also in terms of impact on families and et cetera. But bro more broadly, I think I've tried to, uh, remember that even though we will have to do things that otherwise we may not have had to have done and everyone is operating in a, in a more stressed environment that let's conduct ourselves in a way such that when we get to this we can look back with pride on how we on how we've operated and hopefully that's come through in the way the travel councillors have looked after each other and also their customers that is so interesting because i think you're right you know our true colors come out in a stressful situation. And I think how companies have handled the pandemic with um, their employees and also with their uh, contractors, et cetera, you know, says a lot about, um, about the company and their value set. Uh, and, you know, and I think that's so important. I love that you started a welfare fund as well. I think that's in really incredible. Um, so let's just talk about travel counseling for a minute. Uh, and. And why would someone, let's say, want to use, what would be the advantage of using a travel counselor over um, not using one, uh, for example? I mean, I know we have a lot of women who are coming into our program. And uh, in fact, we have a woman who just got a job yesterday and I looked up her initial um, her initial survey. Cause we, had, we, take a, we do an initial survey when women join and we say, well, why did you join our program? And very often they say, I don't know what I want to do, but I want to do something different. And that's what happened in this woman's case. She uh, was a teacher and she decided she was going to leave teaching. She knew she wanted to do something different. She didn't know what. And uh, and now she's uh, she's got a, a fantastic job, you know, on Twitter. But I I guess what I want to know is, you know, there's a lot of women in our community that aren't sure, sure about what they want to do next, but they do love travel. Um, we had a student last night talking about how she was thinking about starting an Instagram account to feature all of the places in the UK that um, films were films were shot, you know, beautiful places that you could go visit that you've also seen in movies and shows, et cetera. 
And uh, so why would someone want to get into travel counseling? Uh, and, and, and what is it? And why would someone do that? Why would someone pick a travel counselor over? I mean, I know you've explained what it is a bit, but why would someone pick a travel counselor over doing it themselves? What are the advantages? Well, you, yeah, great. I'll do the first, the first, the first question about why, why become a travel, travel counselor. And people who are drawn to it have got a natural passion and interest in, in travel. So you might have chosen that as your first voc vocation when you uh, left school or, or college, or you may be in a vocation that, you know, it's not, doesn't involve travel, but you find yourself in your spare time thinking of, dreaming of, planning your own trips, and you, you might get dragged into planning the holidays of, of your family and friends. You have natural interest in in the world and all the stuff that the world has to uh, has to offer. So our academy program offers the ability of people who don't work in travel to do a job that they've got a natural interest interest in, and we're also looking for people who also get a buzz, get motivated by the fact that. By a couple of things one that they're looking after people so we provide us a human to human service it's a professional service in the same way that you're a doctor or a lawyer you know being a travel advisor is a full-time full-time profession you need to know what you're talking of talking about but we want people who've got that innate desire to want to care for other for other people and make sure they have a wonderful time and get a buzz when they know that customers had a brilliant brilliant holiday and then i think the other attribute we're looking for the people who understand maybe that that they may have experienced uh, conventional working and working as a salary and working as a small or larger larger business, but they want to do something for them for themselves. They want to liberate themselves, perhaps from fixed hours or a fixed location uh, or the hierarchy that maybe get corporate life. And listen, you know, I've never been myself. I've been a complete hypocrite. I've always worked in a in a conventional conventional way, but I think. Are people who are who are attracted by travel councils understand that there's something about them they want to do something for themselves and be in control of their own destiny. Now that comes at a significant uh, sacrifice and, and risk because our travel councillors are, like some of your uh, listeners, are self-employed. They run their own, they run their own, they run their own business. They've got no got no fixed salary. So as far as I'm concerned, I'll always put them on a on a pedestal and making that brave step to become a travel councillor and be self self-employed. But by doing it, you can liberate yourself from the, the confines you get, maybe in the corporate, corporate world, doing a job that you love. And if you're successful uh, at it, you can earn much more than you could otherwise have done, as many of our travel counsellors uh, do. But perhaps for many more, it's more about they've got much greater flexibility about doing a job they're passionate about and also endeavouring to be a decent partner and a decent parent, parent too. And the flexibility that it provides, I think, is why most people, once they've done it, uh, even 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 after what we've gone through in the past ten months, would say they had done it sooner, but they don't do it sooner because it's a big bold, big bold step to become self-employed. In terms of the customer, I mean, never has there been a time in my experience in travel, customers appreciated more the power of having a human being to look after your travel needs than 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 now. I mean, sadly, lots of people had to have their holiday plans cancelled or postponed during the pandemic, and they had to desperately trying to get those rectified if they booked it online by going to that company are going direct to a travel provider like an airline and, and waiting in the queue to get looked after. Our travel councillors don't do that. They'll be contacting you before you need to need to contact them to make sure that you are you are you are looked after and making sure that you travel safely, you have the experience that you want. And your hard earned money, and maybe you know holidays are a significant investment, no matter what your income uh, le level is, it's a hard earned uh, pleasure you are choosing to uh, do for yourself and your and, and your family and it's a repeat purchase you want to get it right our travel council will go to the end of the earth to make sure that when you go on that holiday you have a brilliant memorable experience and if anything goes wrong we'll be there to we'll be there to fix it so you are getting a professional looking after your needs giving you a level of care and attention and financial protection that no one else will will will, will provide and that's the power of dealing with a human being that cares as much about your travel plans as you do that's so interesting. Um, it, I'm like desperate to work with one of your travel counselors. And of course, we have a few in our community, which is brilliant. Um, and uh, and Katie, Katie Pofferman is actually one of your travel counselors. And she's a wonderful person. She's a wonderful um, addition to our community. Uh, she's watching right now. So shout out to Katie if you're watching live, because uh, you're watching live. Um, and uh, so 
this is great. So you've explained what a travel counselor is. I can see the appeal, especially for someone who just loves traveling. And I, I know what you're talking about, like that person who loves to plan the holidays. I am not that person. <laughs> my okay. husband did. Uh, it was so funny okay. when you were saying that. I was, I was like, my husband needs to, to think about the, doing this. But, you know, he loves to plan the holidays. He loves to have a plan. He loves to have, you know, sussed out all the restaurants and, you know, organize all the activities. And it makes a big difference when you have someone in, who cares about that. I just want to like go on the go on the holidays yeah. and enjoy myself. Should be a uh, yeah, but I love you. Also mentioned um, corporate travel. I hadn't even thought about that because, of course, if you are going to do a, um, a a retreat for your team or something like that, you you do want the best experience for them, and that takes a lot of the stress out of organizing it. Um, so so that I didn't even think about that as a possibility. Um, so how have you? How have people? been marketing in this environment? How are people still able to generate revenue in this environment? Um, what are your top What are your top travel counselors doing uh, to keep going? Okay, if I go back, you know, the, the context before the pandemic and the fundamentals haven't, haven't changed. Our business is based on, you know, first and foremost, looking after the customers that you've already got before you chase new customers. And I think that's a fundamental part that maybe that could apply to to a number of, number, of, number of businesses. Before we spend hard-earned money trying to find new customers, let's look after the customers that we've already already got. And two-thirds of our business, two-thirds of our travel council business will be repeat will repeat business. I've done such a good job of looking after that customer that, will come, that they will come back to me. And then the most powerful way of getting new business, and you'll know this, uh, Joy, before you dive into uh, advertising either in an analog or a digital way, is to leverage the advocacy of the customers that you've got. So we get most new customers, or Travel Council get most new customers from referrals. I've done such a wonderful job of looking after my customer that either of their own volition or at my uh, request, they will recommend me to their family and friends. And we measure our effectiveness of that using Net Promoter Score, which some people will be familiar with. And you know, a Travel Council's Net Promoter Score on average at the time of booking is 94%. So it's right up there with the best brands in the world. So first and foremost, do I look after my existing customers? And our travel councils will share the qualities that, that your viewers and network will have is that I take my job seriously. I take my commitment to my customers seriously. I probably take it too seriously. Sometimes I go to bed at night and, and I can't sleep because I'm worrying about a customer and have I checked them online and what I need to do to do for them. We all have that, don't we, sort of constant agitation about wanting to be better and do the right, do the right, do the right thing. So you have that look after your customer, they come back to you, and then you get then you get referrals from them. So that's the cornerstone of the of the model. And then increasingly, now of course, we can leverage that advocacy. And we can do that in analog ways and digital ways. So in analog ways, there are lots of physical networks, there are business networking groups that you can use. And also you're networking at the school gate, you're talking about your family and what's going on in your world and comparing notes about children or in your uh, sports club or whatever the network might might be and then also you're networking in social media challenges and oh that's what you educate your your community community on but we educate in a certain type of type of way which is you know build a relationship first and then sell sell second so we provide a plethora of direct marketing assets that will will market product so you want a uk break on around the world trip cruise flight We've got all the physical product and the promotions and the beautiful inventory and the prices. So a travel counselor can furnish that to you directly using our marketing campaigns into your inbox or they can furnish it to you through their social media uh, groups. So we've got all of that, but we try and educate people first, build a relationship and then sell sell second. Try and build a bank of trust that you can then draw up before you start to sell into, 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 into people. Now in the pandemic, one of the reasons that our travel councils are gonna come out of it strongly and you know, without blowing our own trumpet too, too much. Martin Lewis from MoneySavingExpert.com, you know, made a validation of the brand that said, when you come out of this and think about your travel, your travel needs, look at businesses like travel councils where they looked after their customers during the pandemic. And that is because the disciplines that we had going into it, which are about looking after customers, keeping in touch with, keeping in touch with customers. We've had no real serious income until recently for about six, nine months of the year 
for us to be able to come back out of this and have some income, we have to have customers. So therefore, the quality of the relationship you had going into it and then the quality with which you build on that during the pandemic means you're building a foundation, you're building that well of trust that you can draw on as you come out of it. So Travel Council is keeping in touch with customers at a human-to-human -human level, revising their holiday plans, keeping them up to date, and then furnishing them with the product information to inspire them to book when they are comfortable with booking. Yes, they do all of, they do all of that, but they're first of all building that, building that, building that trust. But we provide all the digital assets, all the analog assets that you'd expect of a decent consumer-focused business. But it doesn't replicate the power of the human relationship between the travel council and how they make you as another human being feel about booking and doing business with them. Gosh, that was really powerful. I think that's going to be our Instagram uh, TV clip because really just understanding that concept that people buy from people and, you know, the basic marketing concepts of, you know, taking care of your customers. I also love that reminder that your existing customers are your best returning customers. And actually, the it shouldn't always be about getting new customers, but actually about serving the ones you've got and being able to... Um, help them with more of their needs right so that's so so important and we're you know we we're just learning that lesson at tech pixies now because for a long time we've only had one thing to offer our uh, community which is our social media magic course and a, a year ago we experimented with a follow-on uh, program and that's gone really well with a small group of people so now we'll be rolling that out at a bigger scale but i think it's um you know you do you want to serve the people that you're connected with and you really uh explain that well and also just i i there's i think there's such power in relationships and uh and w in when you're in a tough situation it's easy to throw your hands up and just stop focusing on the relationship but what you're saying is the investment in the relationship is what will um you know bring the business back when the doors open again um yeah, 100% absolutely. Back, it'll build it build it back even better than it was before it, because yeah. you know when you're looking after your existing customer you're not neglecting your everyone wants to grow I, th I think and get new customers by looking after your existing customers you will grow your network because they will recommend you people naturally you know there's a thing called recipro reciprocity in in selling people will want to reciprocate if you're nice to them by talking about you to their family family and friends yeah no 100 percent. that is so true reciprocity is a great um it's a it's a fundamental principle of marketing as well you know i mean i think that's the other thing is when you give people want to give back um well this has been a, a great conversation um and i think you know given the situation it's incredible to be able to interview someone who's right in the thick of it at the moment uh and and having to deal with it um when do you have people that come into your community um and they they're like specifically uh, targeting one, uh, you know, like let's say European travel or uh, UK travel, or do they become general? Like, do they become generalists? Or what do you find? Uh, do you think it helps to become a specialist in something? I know in the social media world, you know, you could specialize in all five networks, or you could learn all five net networks and be a generalist and know which ones to do, or you can really go deep on one or two networks. What do you? Th what do you? Um, what, do, what happens in your community? I mean, fundamentally, you want to be able to address the needs needs of the of the customer. So you know, you follow the needs of the of the customer, and you uh, it's impossible to be an expert in in everything. So that's the whole benefit benefit of being part of the community. So in our platform, we can connect people who've got different specialisms, so they can help and support each support each support each other. There is a broad demarcation in some areas, so. We do have uh, some travel counselors who specialise purely in corporate travel, and you know if if their corporate traveller wants to book a holiday, they will uh, get another another travel counselor who does leisure holidays. Look after that, look after that customer, so they'll reciprocate in that. In that way, then we have some people who specialise in cruising the holidays, which is a large large market. We have some spec some people who will specialise more in sports and events. We do a lot of events and event events management, and then we have others who maybe will have demographic that is more demanding of more luxury uh, type of type of holidays so it's up to the travel counselor really it's, it's your business they're your they're your customers the key thing is you're passionate about what you're what you do you're probably going to be doing it for a long time so you know it's a, I think it's a real privilege I've got three 
three daughters. I'd love it. I'd love if they get to a point where they're prosecuting a career that they're passionate about. So if you're doing a job that you're passionate about, if you're passionate about travel and then an element within travel, then yes, go and go and procure, procure it. But you don't need to neglect the other travel demands of your customers because our community can step in and give you that knowledge or you can set up a relationship with those other people to, 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 to support that customer. Make sure you don't let that customer out, out of your net out of your network because you're doing asking things that you don't uh, you don't you don't know about. Uh, but that's what the that's how the model would, uh, would would work. There's no doubt that people want to know and deal with people who know what they are talking uh, talking about talking about. Uh, and it's reasonably easy in principle for customers to find out about uh, destinations, but it's time consuming. And time is a really, really uh, precious commo commodi commodity. And our travel councillors will save you time and they'll save you money and they'll make sure you have a wonderful experience. And we want to appeal to people actually who are attracted by that. I just love the idea of creating a trip for someone, that person sharing the images they had on holiday, the memories that they had, to get, had together. And that makes me feel great about the job that I do. Well, it's really interesting because one of the books I'm reading at the moment is High Performance Habits, and he talks about passion and action. And when you put passion and action together, you get results. And, you know, he basically said, you know, um, so many people have one or the other, like they might be passionate about travel, but then they don't take the steps to actually turn that into yeah. a career. Or they might be passionate, of, uh, they might take action, but they're doing something that they don't really love. And so, uh, you know, but if the, what the point of the, 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 the part of this book was talking about was if you actually want results, you want to have passion and action together. Uh, and that's where it becomes, you know, super powerful. Absolutely. I think if you're having your own, own business, you also need a, a fair amount of resilience too. And I, you know, I take my hat off to the many people who are self-employed in the, in the, in the country who are prosecuting their chosen vocation, sometimes without any customers of income during the middle of, middle of this. And uh, I think the resilience that people have, people have shown is just an incredible en indictment of the human, human spirit. And I'm no doubt that they've been doing the right thing by the customers in the, in the meantime, I read something really lovely early on in in this that everyone, it sounds a bit corny, this will just bear with me. Uh, everyone's writing their own book in their own way. We don't all get to pub publish it. And we're not going to let this pandemic be the last chapter in our book, are we? You know, we're going to go on to other to other to other things. We're going to find a way by hook or by crook to get to get through it. Respect the rules, look after people's health, but going to look forward to a brighter future together. And hopefully we can all do that. Yeah, well, and you know. One thing I say all the time to my students is, you know, you are the thinker of your thoughts. You can choose a new thought. And it's a little bit of the situation, you know, is your glass half full? Is your glass half empty? How, you know, the pandemic, I tell, I tell this to my students all the time, the pandemic doesn't care how you feel about it, right? It's, an, it's yes. neutral. <laughs> it's it's going to wreak havoc whether you care or not. And, and and it's not so much whether you care or not, but whether you, you know, it's it's you think, okay, here's the pandemic. And then you have this thought like, Am I going to let this stop me or am I going to persevere despite it? Right. And I guess one of the pow powerful things about community, and I would imagine this is what's happening in your community, it's happening in ours, is that when people are at a point where they're frustrated or they're a little bit in need of support, they, they know that if they've got a supportive community, that if they if they speak up, they'll get the support that they need. And I know for for us, you know, that's been wonderful um, where, you know, if someone comes in and says, I'm, I'm, I'm having a bit of a tough week. Then a bunch of people will jump in and, and just support them. Just give them a virtual hug. You know, you get all these virtual hug, <laughs> giffy images and emojis. Absolutely. Yeah, I think yeah, I mean, it's, you've got to know you know you'd be part of something where it's okay not to be okay because it's going to happen at some it's going to be happen at some at some point and that's where you do rely on your you know your, your friends that you built up within your within your community and I'm, i've no doubt that you know in the context of the travel councils community and the and i guess the savers in yours that that human to human connection between travel counselor to travel counselor has been the single most important thing that's helped people help people get through it 100%. Well, we've had a great conversation about community. We've had a great conversation about resilience. Uh, and also, I've learned a ton about travel counseling. Um, and, and I think it's a really viable career for a lot of the women in our community who don't know what they want to do, but they love travel. And then they've got these social media skills. So let's talk about marketing travel. Uh, obviously, pandemic uh, aside, 
what what are the best um, networks for uh, do you find are the best networks for people to be on social media wise uh, if they are a travel counselor? I would assume Instagram is a dead giveaway because of the visual nature of it. But do you find people having success on other networks or in other in other ways, maybe through email, et cetera? Yeah, I mean, email is a is a given. Uh, I, I, I think uh, corporate travel counselors will uh, be adept at using LinkedIn both to you know find new customers and to leverage the advocacy that they've got from existing existing customers uh, Instagram is really good for many of our many of our travel counselors and you tend to find you know like anything you get early adopters of that and then it will it will spread virally within the within the network I'd say probably for the vast majority of travel counselors the most powerful tool is Facebook uh, where well, they've built up a natural network anyway through their family and family and friends and then intersperse that with uh, you know their product knowledge and we, we encourage people to you know think about Facebook both as a business tool and a personal personal tool and they can set themselves up a, set themselves up a, accordingly you know they've got much more of that we've got we've all got much more adept haven't we in using a media like this so zoom calls to relate with relate with people so we've had travel has in the pandemic uh doing travel clinics on zoom where they've set up a network of customers and you know on a regular basis talking about what's happening in travel and sharing them some destination information i mean there's lots of new product coming into the market particularly in, in greece this summer that's wonderful and really appealing so they'll use those zoom calls to share some of to share some of, share some of that as well and then you know creating their own their own networking groups so you know uh, in the past where there hasn't been a networking a physical networking group in a village or a town they will have created one so a you know a coffee morning and now they're doing that virtually virtually too but hopefully it'll be replicated in the physical world when we can start to start to do, to do it anything that enables a face-to-face human-to-human connection is the most powerful way of getting your humanity and caring and values and professionalism a, uh, across and social is great for great 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 for that but as i said before it's not just about bombarding it with a load of offers it's about you know top and tailing whatever we produce so it's personal to the travel council and personal to the customer yeah brilliant i love that and i love the fact that you pointed out linkedin because a lot of people think you know especially if they're learning social media they think oh i you know, how can I use LinkedIn? And actually LinkedIn is, is a brilliant network um, for establishing, your, establishing yourself as an authority in that space. And, you know, what you've got is an active audience of people who are working, <laughs> which also, That's you know, awesome. it helps. If you are working, it does help because you can then uh, pay for holidays. So I think that's one of the huge uh, advantages of LinkedIn is you've got a, a captive audience of people who are in careers or, or, you know, I mean, there are people looking for jobs and things like that, but a huge proportion of people are on LinkedIn because they are wanting to establish themselves in their industry and they're wanting to network. So there's also probably an opportunity there to network with other travel counselors as well and, you know, kind of stay on top of the industry. And absolutely. And none of that, you know, uh, all of that is complementary to, to the old fashioned stuff, like picking up the phone. That's still yeah, no, I, just, I love it when you say that, like just pick up the phone, you know, like how many people just forget that that's an option? <laughs> well, picking up the phone having, having a chat uh, is still really, 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 really important. Yeah, well, we just launched a, uh, we just launched a, a bot on our website uh, for chatting yeah. and we, we gave her a name, we called her Pixie Bot. And, you know, it does end up going into a human, but it starts with Pixie Bot. And, uh, and people are having a lot of fun with it because we've been able to put some, some giffies in there and everything. But it does, at the end of the day, I said, I want, let's keep this bot really simple. Like you either sign up for our free training or you ask us a question and a real human gets back to you because that's one of the problems with bots is no one ever gets back to you when you actually yeah, want to have yeah. a conversation. Um, but yeah, I think that actually picking up the phone and just getting on the phone with someone is really important. And that's a really great exercise, actually, for someone who's um, like, let's say someone's getting into the travel counseling business. One of the things they can do, and just like any other business, you can do um, discovery calls. You know, you can you can get on the call and get, get on the get on the call with like 10 different people. And just ask them questions like, you know, if you could go on your dream holiday, where would it be to? And and then and then you get you get confirmation that of what people really want when they're traveling. And then you can you can translate that into actually pitching products that fit them. 
Yeah, I think where social media is is brilliant uh, is obviously if you're new to uh, a, a business, it's a great tool to find customers. So you know, if you if you're starting a travel a travel business, then you know how do I find customers? How do I network my uh, myself? And social media is perfectly placed for for that. We've taken on 150 new travel council during the course of the of, of the of the pan- pandemic. In terms of finding new new customers in in the current world where you can't physically network, you're not having those natural conversations at the school gate or in business networking groups like like BNI. Then you can you know use social media and should use social media to share you know change my career and this is what I'm doing and and start to furnish through your social media accounts stories of yourself and the business and the product that you. That you offer so social media is a great way of finding uh, new customers and building up a, building up a database and that's an effective tool i think for many, for many travel councils that start in their business oh totally and actually you made a great point there because uh at the moment where we cannot physically go to a room and meet new people that we don't know social media is a great place to go and find people that are interested in travel start up a conversation with them get to know them um 100 percent uh in there so um this is great lorna one of our students she's watching right now she says great to listen to this and now i'm even more motivated to start looking at booking a break with one of the pixie travel counselors i totally agree with that <laughs> that would be great um and kate says Yay, two awesome people. So we, you know, we, we love Kate. She's the one who recommended that we talk to you. Uh, she absolutely adores uh, the company and, and of course, your leadership. Um, and so I guess maybe we'll close on that. What does it take to lead, uh, you know, in a pandemic? You've had to obviously um, lead the, the people that are in your, um, in your company, the, the travel counselors. What's what's been your biggest learning? I mean, apart from community, because that's I know that's been a huge one. Uh, well, I can only speak very o- openly about about it and be honest about it. I mean, my uh, you know my management style, if I had one before the pandemic, was sort of try to be a little bit less about me and more about providing a platform for for others. I think you know the pandemic quite rightly people were saying you know what you do what you're doing as the leader of this business to help us get to get through it so i've tried to step for step to the fore and and be visible and provide the assurance and uh, hopefully calmness without sending people to sleep and clarity about what we need to what we need to do and i think as the you know, as the ceo of a business and the leader of, leader of any business you're primarily concerned with you know the culture of the business the strategy and the uh and the people and you know our business is inherently a people business customers are people our travel councils are, are people so what do we need to do what can we do to help people navigate navigate the profound implications of uh, of this so I've, we've tried you know to be constantly thinking about what's the human impact of all of, of all of this and listen we've had to make some difficult decisions in the in the midst of it uh, too uh, which which weren't, weren't you know were, were difficult uh, but even in doing that, you know, we try to think about the impact on the on on the on the person and the, and the human being that we're that we're dealing with. Now, that all might sound terribly trite and, and, and corny, but that's what we've endeavoured to do. I'm not saying we've always done it, you know, to the to the to, to the perfectly, you know, but we've done our best to do it like to do it like that. And I think that hopefully will see us uh, will see us through it. But I think as the leader. You've got to keep on reminding yourself that you know it's not about you; it's about people that you're trying to service and support. Because without them, you don't have a you don't have a business don't have a business. So, you know whether you're part of our 200 support team that we've got in Manchester or in our offices across the globe or our 2,000 travel counsellors. Our job is to provide a platform for them to have a fulfilling career or, or or business and do all that we can to help them. Now, you will occasionally because business sometimes can be tough. You know, occasionally, if you're protecting a company's culture or things have gone wrong or you're dealing with risk, that you maybe need to have more robust, rounded conversations. But hopefully, people know when you're doing that, it's coming from a good, well intended place. Yeah. 100 uh, percent there is one question that's come in as well and feel free to answer it or choose not to we edit this out for the podcast anyway but uh it says what is the difference between travel counselors and in teletravel yeah so i think they're uh, 
uh, relatively new, so they're not brand new. Not, uh, I think they entered the market a couple of years 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 ago, and I don't. I'm not completely familiar with their, their model, but I think broadly, uh, their primary sort of route of uh, attracting people is people who've never worked in the in- industry and get the benefits of being a travel agent and a travel ad- travel advisor through their net, which I think is which I think is quite quite large. Uh, our model is a high service, high touch model. So, you know, we want you to provide a high service to your customers. And in return, we provide a high touch service to you. We want really you to be thinking about your customers and how you sell a market. And we do everything else for you. So the technology, the license and the product, uh, the financial protection, uh, the administration of your, of your booking, all of that is serviced through our, through our platform. So I think our model is is deeper in terms of support but i'm biased i would say say that and i don't know their approach i generally don't know their approach to to finding and taking pe- people on i know that when we uh take people on as a travel counselor there is a you know really rig- rigorous process to enable the individual make an informed decision about us and us to make an informed decision about them because we want people who see it as a full-time professional vocation and have got the innate skills to be able to look after the customer and deliver the customer experience that we want and the intimacy that we want to we want to deliver. So I think it's a different type of company operating in the same in the same sector, and that and that's cool. We have to stand by what we offer and, and how good we are at what we do, and what our travel councils say about say about us. Yeah, I think that's so important, and I I get those questions all the time about our competitors. You know, what differentiates you and. And really, it's about knowing how you serve your people and being able to express that. And I think you've done that so well today. Um, well, I know for sure if I'm going to book with a travel counselor, it's definitely yeah. going to be a travel counselor. Um, I love that. Uh, and we, of course, have one in our community who's amazing. Um, and I know that this is going to be the summer of staycations. So uh, I guess the final question I have, I keep saying there's the final question, but um, where do you think if you're going to staycation in the UK, is it going to be too busy in Cornwall, do you think? Is there, well, listen, I, mean, there's, there... there's, I mean, our travel counselors are doing a great job in, in offering domestic breaks and there's some great product, uh, but it's not easy to find. You know, if you, if you know the hotel that you want, then you know, maybe, but there's lots of great choice, lots of experience-based stuff you can now do in the in the UK. So I genuinely, I genuinely, you know, I am biased, but I'm trying, I genuinely mean there's that much product now, but there's also a massive demand for it. You won't get into some places, so a travel council will guide you through that. But I also wouldn't give up hope of a uh, summer holiday ab- ab- abroad. The, the vaccine rollout, you know, is fantastic news. There's a lot of work being done on these green travel passes so you can travel safely if you've been vaccinated or have got a negative negative test and there's also already musings from some destinations like Greece and Spain that they may welcome UK visitors now there's no there's no uh, uh, complete confidence in that at the, at, the, at the moment but we have seen a significant uptick in demand, even though things still are not completely clear since Boris Johnson made his announcement on on last on last Monday so Domestic breaks, absolutely. You'll be able to have a great, great time. Can't promise the weather, but speak to a travel counsellor. But there's also the opportunity for some summer holidays, summer holidays uh, to uh, a little bit further, further afield. And your travel counsellor will be able to advise you on all of that. Well, I am crossing my fingers uh, to get to go to Italy. My... Uh, okay. um, We've got uh, we've got a, my my mom and and her partner who's been I mean he's been in my life for fifteen years now probably longer sixteen years um, uh, they ha- they love Italy and we haven't seen them for two two years oh, yeah. uh, because of the pandemic and so we're kind of hoping that you know we'll be able to go um, I'm just desperate to see my family uh, two years is a very long time to not see your family yeah. I think you're not the only one thinking that. Yeah, I think even if I think about it, I, I almost burst out in tears. But um, but that's that's our that's our big uh, our big hoping it works out. Right. And of course, we do you know the crazy thing is because I'm American, I often um, I, I I've had to give up my passports at different points for visas and for now I'm going for citizenship and things like that. And um, so we and we've had to do a lot of staycations because we just haven't been allowed to leave the country. Um, and I mean, and also being American, I love exploring this country. 
Um, and you know, you, there's so many places, you know, like I said, Cornwall, and um, I love the high, the Scottish Highlands, Wales, there's so many places to go and experience in the UK. Um, we're, we're actually quite blessed for those of us who, who won't be able to leave. But yeah, like you said, don't underestimate it, there might be a chance to be able to go. So let's hope that that is the case. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, you know, the councils are part of a global community and a community there's 1,200 in the UK. So, you know, a travel councillor who's helping a, a customer go to a different different part of, a, of the country will be able to get local insight from the travel councillor in that part of the world on where's the best restaurants, where's the best fish and chips, et cetera, et cetera. So, so yeah, yeah. I mean, travel councils are well placed now just to help you with domestic holidays. Well, now I just need to find the equivalent version of you in all of the different industries so we can point people in those directions when they go, I don't know what I want to do. Because what one of the things we have are these amazing women who've got these amazing skill sets. And then now that they've got the skill sets, they're like, okay, what next? What do I do? Where do I go? So I guess the, the, the reason I decided to do this podcast and really wanted to do this podcast was because I wanted women to know that once they've got those um, social media skills and they've got the confidence to put themselves out there, which we do with our social media magic program, that actually if they love and are passionate about travel, that Travel Counselors is a great direction to go to. So tell us where people can find you and uh, sign up with you and, and explore travel counseling. Yeah, just go to our just go to our web go to our website and you've got a consumer part of that, you know, and then there's a recruitment part of that and then uh, go through the recruitment website and then uh, fill in some details and then our, our team will get in touch and have a conversation with you and start the start the process of educating you more about the business and the model and how it works it ask any questions that you've got there's no absolutely no hard hard sell you know uh, and it and it will take some time you know it, it sometimes takes many months sometimes it takes many years of people to make that make that decision we want you to make an informed decision about is this the right thing for you and are we the right the right company for uh, for you and then we'll also you know uh, take a look at you too and make sure that you've got all the ingredients that we're looking 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 for that ability to care and and and, and relate and be part of something bigger than yourself and contribute to that and draw on it if you want to, you can keep yourself to yourself it's entirely up to you but we'll have that conversation build that relationship and then and if you decide to come on board then we'll take you through an immersion process and lock you into the into the into the community and we'll bust it up to, to, to support you but the most important thing is making sure it's right for you 100%. Well, I appreciate your time, Steve. Thank you so much for uh, joining me for live. Um, we've had a couple conversations. I hope one day I get to meet you in person. Uh, it's, you, I love your thought process. I love your business. Uh, and, you know, it, it's just impressive to meet someone who can lead through this environment. And, uh, and yeah, congratulations for keeping everybody's spirits up as much as you can. Uh, and I, I, I know people are excited about travel coming up this year, and I hope that they start booking with you in the future. Thank you very much. It's been an absolute pleasure to spend some time with you all. Thank you.